In this module, we briefly introduce how to port the MK to Advan SDK to your host controller. We will review the configuration for the MK Shield 2 to use an external host to drive the SR40 or SR150, and we will run the distance alert on the ported project that is delivered with USB content of the MK Ultra Advan kit. The MK Ultra Advan SDK can be ported to several platforms, even if they are not natively supported by the SDK. The porting requires adapting the MK Ultraviolet SDK port layer and the NXP Ultraviolet middleware port. Note that the MK library only supports Cortex M4 and M4 with FPU support. All the APIs of the MK Ultraviolet SDK port need to be implemented, even if they are listed as not mandatory, and its hooks to be called where necessary. Refer to the MK Ultraviolet SDK porting guidelines for detailed description of the porting requirements as well as a listing of the APIs. In this module, we will only review a selected subset of APIs. From the whole APIs, we selected MKBLE Advertising Start, which starts Bluetooth Low Energy Advertising using the advertising data as configured in MKBLE Set Advertising Data. Then the MK Ultra Wideband Power On, which powers on the Ultra Wideband chip. For the hooks examples, we selected the MKBLE Advertising Started, which is a hook to indicate to the MK library the host controller has started advertising. This MKBLE Advertising Start and its hook MKBLE Advertising Started represent the two types of APIs to port. The former needs to be implemented on the new platform and the latter to be called when the implementation is finished to identify the MK library. The NRF52840 DK is a versatile single board development kit for Bluetooth Low Energy and other technologies that brings applications to the NRF52840 system on a chip. This model will showcase the distance alert demo, as previously detailed in session 2, using the NRF52840 DK as a host controller. To use the NRF52840 DK as host to directly control the ultra wideband module using the SPI signals, the following configurations are required. The J2 needs to be removed as the QN1990 will be powered off. The J401 jumper needs to be set in position 2C because it is selecting the ultra wideband module to be enabled by the NRF52840 DK. The J402 jumper needs to be set in position 2C as well to communicate with the ultra wideband module. That is to route the signals required for the communication with the ultra wideband module to the Arduino pin header. Finally, the J100 will be set to position 45 to select the NRF52840 DK to supply power. For the NRF52840 DK, ensure that the switch 9 is set to VDD and switch 6 to default, and power it off to avoid any issues while adding the MK Shield 2 by setting the switch J2 off. To route the SPI signals from the SR150 module, plug in the MK Ultra Advanced Shield 2 to the NRF52 and 140 DK by using the Arduino headers as shown in the image. Note that the NRF52840 DK will only connect the inner nails on the MK Shield Arduino headers. Now that we have everything set up, we'll run the distance alert by using the NRF52840 as the external host. In the following section, we'll cover First, how to install the Sega Nvidia Studio, as this is the ID recommended by Nordic and it has a free license when using their products. Once we have it installed, we will import the project delivery with the MK Ultra Advanced Kit to the Sega Nvidia Studio. Next, we will preview the selected ported APIs in the project and finally we will run the distance alert use case. To install the Sega Nvidia Studio, we will go to the Sega official page and download the Sega Nvidia Studio. Here we select the version 542 and we start to download. Once it has finished downloading, we start with installation. We now go through the steps of the installer wizard and we also accept to install the JLink device drivers. Finally, the installation will start. Once installed, you can refer to the Nordic guidelines to enable the license with your product. We'll now open the project delivered with the MKL to Advan Kit USB with the Sega Embedded Studio. To do so, first we open the USB content and we go to Software, MKL to Advan SDK, Source. Here, after we have unzipped the folder, we go to the MKL to Advan SDK, Platforms, NRF52840, Toolchain, and Sega Embedded Studio. We double click on the MK Ultra Open SDK.EM project to open it on the Serial Studio. 
to locate the files that have implemented the HAL API browse on the project tree to words and common. Here you can find the core SDK cone HAL which implements the HAL API. The core SDK OSAL HAL file implements the OSAL API. There is also the Ultra Advanced Shield SR150 folder and the SR40 counterpart, which contain the implementation of the NX3 Ultra Advanced HAL implementation. On the Nordic porting, some APIs require confirmation through an event that some functionality has been enabled, and with others, they are automatically started as soon as the API is called. This can be observed with the MKBLE advertising star and the MKBLE scan star. The former needs the event to confirm that the advertising has started, and the latter, after immediately calling it, it has already started. In the core SDK common hall, we can find the MKBLE advertising start implementation. We can see how we first call the advertising start, which is an API provided by the Nordic SDK. This API will only confirm that the advertising has started through an event, so in case it fails to start, we call the hook to indicate failure. We can now go to the BLE lowbarm.c file which contains the hook. In the BLE lowbarm.c file, we can see how the MKBLE advertising started hook is called to for the MK library when receiving confirmation that the advertising has started. In the core SDK shield HAL file, we can find the implementation of the optional HAL MK Ultra Power On. For this port, it is implemented, however, if it were not implemented, we would still need to declare the function and keep the return MK Ultra Weapon Success line. Now that we have reviewed the APIs, we can proceed with the distance alert demo. To run the distance alert from the PC shell, review session 2 for the dependencies and the required installations. Once it is correctly configured, find the COM port for the NRF52840, which will be identified as a JLink CDC word, and save it. Now let's run the PC shell using the before mentioned port. Now that the NRF52840 is connected, run the start application distance alert command and make sure the tag is R40 is powered on so the ultra advanced branching will be started and we can check the receive notifications. We have now completed the fourth session, so let's review one last time the presented key concepts. We have learned how to configure the shield to use an MCU other than the onboard QN1990. We have reviewed how to use an external host to run the use cases. We have introduced how to port the required layers to your own board. And finally, we have shown how to run the use cases on a ported board. Before we close the session, let me share a few words about mobile knowledge and how you can benefit from our expertise in Ultra Wideband. We can assist you in developing customer software and applications around the Ultra Wideband technology. If the MK Ultra Wideband library fits your needs, we can license it for commercial purposes. We can also offer support on the design of ultra wideband antennas for your specific products and porting and integrating the MK Ultra Wideband SDK to these platforms. This may include bringing up secure ultra wideband ranging between your devices. We can also help you optimize the angle of arrival readings. In general, you can rely on mobile knowledge for developing the use cases and software that fit you or your customer needs.